Let's talk about AI as a workload, how we help you innovate with AI. Developers need to be able to use AI. They need to simplify these complex activities and have access to meaningful data. The work of training models and connecting that to apps has historically been done by small groups of highly skilled data scientists. In a traditional AI workflow, data scientists are a precious resource, but they can become an, a bottleneck. So we need to enable developers to help data scientists scale. OpenShift enables AI innovation for the developer. This benefits uh, users as apps are able to move more intelligently faster. Now my next two guests are democratizing developers' access to AI in different ways to make the AI workflow easy, intelligent, and accessible. You'll hear from Percepta Labs, who've made their deep learning model training as simple as a mouse click with their drag and drop interface. And that's fantastic for instances where you know what your data is, but you just need to apply it to glean the insights, or in this case, return a result for your customers. Then you'll see how H2O AI is approaching the problem of massive amounts of data, where the model you should use isn't clear. Thanks to work from companies like Percepta Labs and H2O AI, developers now have access to AI platforms built on OpenShift made with them in mind. I'd like to welcome Martin and Robert to the stage to show you how to train your, and teach your AI to do powerful things the easy way. Please welcome Percepta Labs Chief Executive Officer, Martin Isaacson, and Percepta Labs Chief Technology Officer, Robert Lundberg. Hi, I'm Martin. And I'm Robert. We are the co-founders of Percepta Labs. Unlike many Silicon Valley startups, Percepta Labs was not built in some Bay Area garage. Percepta Labs was built in a Swedish garage. <laughs> so to start with, how many of you have ever worked with AI? Let me see you raise your hands. That's some. For those of you who don't work with AI, take my word for it. Developing an AI model can be a long, tedious, and complicated process requiring specialized knowledge and skills. Well, we now have a solution aimed at simplifying that process. We built a tool that helps enterprises save time and money when creating AI models. We simplified the model development process by substituting math and code with a simple drag and drop interface. And we built all of it using UBI-based containers on Red Hat OpenShift to make the deployment quick and easy. Okay, so let's just show you how it actually works. And I just wanna mention that if we wouldn't have been running this as containers, we would have to wait at least five minutes for the virtual machines to start up. I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway, to your left, you see the different operations or the ingredients of the AI. In the middle, we have the workspace where we can uh, mix all different kinds of operations. To your right, we see a project menu and on top, a toolbar. Pretty simple. And we're going to do this a little bit like a cooking show where we first will build or bake a model from scratch and start training it in the oven. So we created a data set containing images of red fedoras or red hats. And we bought a model to learn, to learn to classify if an image contains a red fedora or not. So let's load this data into a data set on the workspace. And we will be able to see a sample to verify that the data looks like as we expected. And you can continue to use this drag and drop interface to build out the entire model work workflow. But here we will switch over to a complete workflow and show you the complete process. So we can see the image data layer on the workspace. We have also loaded the label data or the ground truth into another data layer. And this is what our model's output will be compared against during training. And we set the output size to two, since we have two classes, Red Hat, uh, not Red Hat. And in the platform, we can define what sort of AI technique we want to use by choosing a training layer. And uh, we can select from multiple options, including reinforcement learning, uh, genetic algorithms, dynamic routing, and so on. But here we will choose normal supervised learning. And if you're 
too lazy to set the hyperparameters manually, you can do it like us and auto-generate them. Well, let's start training our model. First, we'll set some general settings, for example, for how long we want to run the model. Uh, we automatically get thrown into the stati statistic dashboard where we can see various kinds of metrics. And this might look a little confusing at the start, but Robert is here to walk us through it step by step. Thanks, Martin. So we'll see our three different boxes. At the top, we have the statistics for your training layer. This shows the overall performance of the model. Uh, here we can see things such as the... Okay. Here we can see things such as the uh, input to the model or the current accuracy. We can also see the uh, network output in blue compared to the labels in yellow. And just to the right of that, we see the same thing, just average over many to give you a nice distribution. If you want to keep track of how the model is progressing, you can swap over to accuracy and see it there. At the bottom right, we have something which we call the view box. It's like a peek hole into a model where you can peek into all its different parts. You can select which part you want to look into by clicking on the map over to the left. This gives you full transparency of what's going on inside your model while it's training. You can see things such as the output, the biases, or even the gradients. And if you ever want to, you can just pause your model, change some things up on the workspace, and then keep on training. OK, so it looks like the model has finished its training. So let's go to the test view to see how it would perform against real or live data. Now, it hasn't really trained for that long, so it's not going to be that good. But if you want to know how it works, we have a clickable map right here as well. So if you're satisfied with your model, you can just go over to here, and you can export it as either raw digits, a TensorFlow uh, model, or a container image coming with a full API. So the key points we want to highlight are the simplicity and efficiency of modeling. A nice looking dashboard allowing you to custom edit every, allowing you to um, help with both understanding and with error searching. All built upon a very flexible core allowing you to custom edit every component. And finally, the ability to perform cutting edge AI on OpenShift. Okay, Martin. You want to talk a little bit about how the audience can engage with this? Sure. This model is hosted in OpenShift, and we can communicate with it via Twitter. So we gave this a try and uploaded a picture of Robert wearing a red fedora. And uh, we got the response that it uh, classifies correctly. And you can try this out yourself. Just go to Twitter, Upload a picture and mention at Fedora FinderBot, and it will tell you if it thinks there's a red Fedora or not in the picture. And this will be running through the entire day, so have fun with it. We will be hanging around the emerging tech booth if you want to come and see us. So, in closing, we just want to say, containerize it. Thank you.